Well, welcome again to the Legal Minute here on RTC TV4, sponsored by Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins. We've got one of the partners here with us today, Andy Perkins. Welcome. Thanks. Good to be back. Yes, absolutely. Now, we've got a new subject today. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk a little bit about small claims court. Okay, small claims. Absolutely. Does that mean that I only have $25 that I need, and therefore uh, it's a small amount? You can have a sm- claim that small. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, all if right. you want it. Um, uh, Indiana set up small claims, and, and a lot of people are familiar with uh, uh, the People's Court or these court TV shows. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, when I was growing up, uh, I think uh, uh, People's Court was the only one of those it they was, had. Yes. And, and you had Judge Watner on. Yes. He'd be settling these little disputes. Doug and, Llewellyn would tell us all about it at the <laughs> All end. about it, the play-by-play. <laughs> That's right. But, um, and, it, and it really is, for a lot of people... Um, who go there, that's the only kind of exposure they'll have to any kind of litigation. But the idea behind small claims court, certainly in Indiana, is those disputes where it just uh, wouldn't rise to the level financially uh, of uh, taking up the civil plenary court, which is the, the, the main court, to have a civil dispute, maybe it's over two months unpaid rent or something like that. And, mm-hmm. and uh, a couple of things about small claims court that are really important to note. Number one is that traditional rules of evidence are relaxed. Uh, okay. You can go to small claims court and give hearsay evidence and no one's going to uh, uh, raise a stink over that. You can um, uh, bring in a, a, a repair quote you got from for the damage to your car and just make a copy of that, hand it to the judge, and, and the judge can can do things in a more relaxed fashion. I see. Um, At their discretion, I would think. Sure, sure. And and the rules are written in such a way as to say, hey, that that is when I say rules, the the small claims rules, just mm-hmm. like they are they are appellate court rules, they are criminal court rules. Well, the Supreme Court has put together small claims rules, mm-hmm. and those say uh, things like traditional rules of evidence, uh, uh, by and large, are, aren't aren't to be. Uh, be observed in the same way. And so it's actually written into the rule that the evidentiary <laughs> rules are, are not as applicable. Um, now, that that doesn't mean that uh, some of those things aren't worth consideration. Mm-hmm. That is, just because you can give hearsay evidence that your neighbor said they saw the defendant out spray paint your car doesn't mean it's not still worthwhile to see if your neighbor could testify in person. Mm -hmm. Because hearsay in small claims court is not a reason to make it inadmissible, but it can go to the weight of the evidence. I see. Uh, Sometimes having someone firsthand is is better. Um, It's very common in small claims court for people to show up without attorneys. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if, if I am an individual who's a party to the case, when we say party, plaintiffs or defendants, if I'm an individual... Um, uh, I can do it up to the six thousand dollars small claim amount. So if okay. the dispute is, if the dispute is five thousand dollars, fifty five hundred dollars, it, it tops out at six. But I can go to represent myself. I don't have to have a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Well, even in plenary court, you don't have to have a lawyer. Right. Uh, but um, Indiana allows people to be represented by lawyers if they want. There are some states where uh, uh, they don't let lawyers come to small claims really? court. Really? Uh, uh, in in uh, but Indiana, the way the rule works is if you're, if you're a, uh, if you're like a business entity, if a corporation or an LLC, uh, you can send an employee. I believe it's up to fifteen hundred dollars, and then if the dispute is over fifteen hundred dollars, then y- you know you have to you have to basically uh, contact an attorney, even in small claims court. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the reason that's done is we want to make sure that when one of the parties is is a business entity, that the person really responsible. Uh, or someone who knows how court works has uh, has been assigned there. In terms of the um, the docket for uh, uh, small claims, a lot of collection cases, mm-hmm. a lot of landlord tenant cases uh, fill that docket. Um, and uh, the in addition to relaxing the rules of evidence, um, one of the other important distinctions is that in small claims court, if if you go to sue me in small claims court. Uh, just like regular court, you have to fill out a piece of paper that says what the suit's about. Mm-hmm. In uh, civil plenary court, w- we call that the complaint. Mm-hmm. In small claims court, we call it the notice of claim. Okay. But it's essentially the same idea. You're putting me on notice as to what the suit's about. Mm-hmm. Well, in big court, 
if I don't answer that within a given length of time, mm -hmm. I can lose by default. I can I just see. lose for not answering. I see. So you can win in regular court without ever showing up if I don't answer it. Mm -hmm. A lot of collection cases, they're over $6,000 happen that way. Okay. Well, under $6,000, uh, the rule says all the answers I could make to your, to your lawsuit are deemed made. That I is, see. I'm protected as long as I show up for the hearing, I don't have to do anything special in writing. And it, it prevents people having to worry about uh, legalese mm -hmm. in, in an answer or a formal response to a notice of claim. I can just show up and say, no, he's wrong. Mm -hmm. He's wrong because I got a receipt. Uh, and I did pay him the money he says I didn't. Or he's wrong because um, that's not what we agreed to. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have all kinds of answers. Mm -hmm. And in, in big court, uh, civil plenary court, if I don't detail in my complaint, certain kinds of answers have to be detailed in my answer to mm -hmm. your, I'm sorry, in my answer to your complaint, certain mm -hmm. things have to be detailed. Uh, for example, we call those affirmative defenses, okay. uh, where a good example of an affirmative defense is the statute of limitations. Let's say you've got two years to sue me, mm -hmm. and you sue me three years a after that, that period started, so you're suing me late. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not the clerk's job to say, I'm sorry, uh, the, this guy, the accident happened three years ago, you can't sue this guy. Mm -hmm. It's my job in the defense mm -hmm. to allege, as an affirmative defense, you are past the statute of limitations. Mm -hmm. um, in small claims court, you don't have to worry about that. Okay. All those are brought. Um, it's also not uncommon for one side to file a notice of claim in small claims court, and the other side to have a claim against them, a mm -hmm. counterclaim. Gotcha. You can do counterclaims in small claims court. So you say, I owe you money, and... I say you owe me money, and That's we, right. we go at each other in court. That's right. Those those generally will be handled in the same case. Okay. Uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, the, the filing fee is less, and um, if if you sue me and then I sue you, mm -hmm. I don't have to pay another filing fee. Mm -hmm. I can I can counter sue you in the same, and I can I see. we can show up on that day, and the judge can can dispute all that. Uh, I'm sorry, can hear all of our disputes and and render a decision. So. When dealing with small claims court, I would certainly recommend any anyone who who uh, uh, wants to maybe talk to a lawyer, but mm -hmm. not necessarily have a lawyer with them that day. Right. Uh, that's something that that I've done many times is to just tell people a little bit about uh, um, how it works, tips on w w presenting their case. Some people want a lawyer for that. Mm -hmm. uh, if they don't want to do either one, mm -hmm. uh, the Indiana Supreme Court has published a small claims manual online. Okay. I think the last time it was updated was 2014. But uh, it, you, it's written in plain English, and you can go online and read about small claims court. You'll look for the Indiana St uh, State Supreme Court website, and mm -hmm. then through there you can download the manual. And you can learn the out. rules yourself and go. You can learn quite a bit about it. It's a good, it's a good manual they put together. Okay. So. Very, very interesting. Now, um, in your case, do you have often that you do represent at the small claims level? I, I would say not often. It, it just, I think there is a presumption that lawyers don't go to small claims court. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. And and also, uh, you know, it, it is hard to be cost effective when it comes to if a dispute is about three hundred dollars, it's right. you know, and and I understand that, and you know, I don't take offense from someone who says sure. I'm not going to hire a lawyer to fight over three hundred dollars. I would probably say that's probably a good decision. We talked about the filing fee with the court. It does cost to um, make your complaint to yes. the court and have them hear the case. Yes. Um, my twenty-five dollar example at the beginning, well, not worth it for the twenty-five. It would cost. It is more than twenty-five dollars. <laughs> okay. uh, it's, it's not as much as uh, regular court, but it, it costs you more than twenty-five dollars. Right. Right. So there is a point of diminishing return. For <laughs> That's sure. right. That's okay. right. Uh, in Fulton County, uh, by local rule, the Superior Court handles all of the small claims. Okay. Matters. So none of those happen up in circuit court. What do you court. mean by local rule? Um, just like the state uh, has rules through the Supreme Court that govern all kinds of ways that the lawyers practice everything from rules about how we can advertise to uh, rules about how... Uh, uh, documents should be double-spaced or what documents mm -hmm. should be uh, signed under oath. Um, counties are allowed to make certain rules about how courts work. Usually those rules, and every county has different local rules, um, usually they're addressing things like uh, caseload. Uh, they'll have a, have a way to 
say maybe okay if if the day the charges are filed is an even numbered date it's going to be filed in this court versus this court okay. to get some randomization in it and that kind of thing a little bit of balance across yeah the... and and also it can be jurisdictional in larger counties where they might have a designated drug court mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll find a way in the lo local rules is where you would look to say well how do we decide what cases go to drug court and what cases don't um, in our county uh, the local d rules address some jurisdictional things in exchange for taking all the small claims, all the traffic, mm -hmm. uh, that is in traffic infractions, mm -hmm. which is a kind of, uh, if you want to think of those as a notch beneath misdemeanors, right, right infractions. Right. So all the, all the small claims and all the infractions and all the misdemeanors go through uh, a superior court. Okay. And you could say on the other side, uh, uh, Circuit Court handles all the uh, juvenile matters, I see. Uh, uh, and uh, felonies are kind of split between the two courts. But so uh, usually, when when someone has a question mm -hmm. uh, uh, about what judge they're going to be in front of, if I find out what the matter's about, I, I have a pretty good chance of telling them what judge they're going to end up in front of that day. I so. see. Very interesting. And uh, local powers again. That gets more into, of course, your constitution, which we should all memorize, but none of us do. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and, um, talks about the rights of of the state and the local and uh, the county government. So very interesting. Well, we've uh, covered a lot of subjects here, and I'm learning more every time we sit down with uh, the attorneys here at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins. I want to invite you to uh, give them a call if you have any questions regarding a legal matter, from the small to the large. Sure. Um, but if it's a $25 small claims court, mm, probably not going to do that <laughs> one. But uh, again, thank you very much. Uh, educational, if nothing else. Andy Perkins here, one of the partners with Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP here in Rochester. You've got their website and their information on the screen here at the end. Please give them a call if you have any questions. Mm -hmm.